Welcome to your first video lecture in biology. Uh, we're starting off the year right away with ecology and we're going to be studying the biosphere and all the interactions that happen within the biosphere. And the thing I want you to think about over the next few days as we're working is how is the Earth in a scientific sense a living planet? We know that the planet Earth is not actually living but is the only planet that we know of that has life on it. And so we're going to be studying the interactions that are happening within our biosphere. If we take a look at the word ecology, uh, it has a suffix at the end that we already know. Uh, and we know that ology stands for the study of. So uh, ecology is going to be the study of interactions among uh, organisms. So it might be like the elephants in our picture uh, and the trees that uh, are with them uh, living in their environment. And it, the elephants and the trees are going to have some interaction. And so we want to study what that interaction is and how they react with one another within their environment. We also might study the interactions between organisms and their physical environment. So this might be, you know, the elephants and uh, the water that is in their environment. Water is not living, and, but the elephants are going to be using the water and if the elephant herd is too big, maybe they run out of water and that's going to affect the arrest the rest of the environment. So that's ecology and so we're going to look at what biosphere means and biosphere also has a root word that we already know. Uh, the root word bio we know means life. And the biosphere consists of a couple of things. Number one, it consists of everything that is living on the planet Earth. Okay, All plants, animals, bugs, uh, bacteria, anything that is living on Earth it is part of our biosphere. It also consists of all the parts of the Earth uh, that aren't living. And so those would be things like the actual land, the water, and the atmosphere. All those things are not living and yet all life on Earth depends on those things and those things are affected by everything that is living. So, within our biosphere, there are several levels of organization. First, we have the individual organism, and in our picture here, it is our elk. So, we can take one individual and, do, and look at how they use the environment around them. But many times, we don't do just one individual, we do an entire population. So, several individuals will make up a population. So we have this population of elk. We might do a study on how that population within uses their environment. Uh, if we have several populations of several different types of animals, that makes up a community. If they're all living with one another, that makes up a community. So we have the elk. We have the moose. Uh, we've got uh, what looks like a wolf here of some sort, an owl. We've got the trees, the grass, uh, the air, uh, the different types of birds, rabbits. All of those things are different populations within that environment and make up the community and all those things are going to affect one another. If we have several communities, mm -hmm. that is going to make up an ecosystem. And I got a little bit behind here. There's community. Here's ecosystem. Our ecosystem is going to be everything that is involved um, within that community. So anywhere that we have a community like this, that is going to be a part of that specific ecosystem. If we take several, eco several ecosystems and put them together or group them together, we get a biome. And a biome is going to cover a much larger portion of that earth. If we take the biome, all the biomes of the world, then we get our biosphere. 
So all of these things are going to interact with one another within an environment, and if we put them all together step by step, we get the next level. So organism to population, several populations make a community, several communities make an ecosystem, several ecosystems make a biome, and several biomes make our biosphere. There are a couple of big factors that play a role in every environment, uh, and sometimes they're hard to distinguish between. The first is biotic factors. And again, biotic begins with that bio meaning life. So we have living factors. So a biotic factor is any living part of a specific environment. All right? And so if we look at this bird, this big bird here may interact, uh, have interactions with other organisms such as this fish, or the grass, or the trees, where uh, whatever living part that this bird interacts with is a biotic factor to that big bird. Abiotic factors, on the other hand, have that root word as well, bio meaning life. However, it has this A in front of it, and in Latin that A means uh, not. So we have not living factor or all non-living parts of that environment. So in this environment in our picture below, that can mean the water, the soil, the rocks, the atmosphere up here, the clouds, uh, how much rain uh, that environment gets are all non-living things that are going to affect that bird that we were talking about in the last slide. Now, I said all of these things are going to interact with one another and affect one another. And when we get this dynamic mix of biotic and abiotic factors, they're going to shape our environment. And any change in one of those factors is going to affect most, if not all, of the other things that live there. I hope this helps. So we're going to be using some of these terms uh, in class, or all of these terms in class and be doing different experiments and practice worksheets uh, and having discussions about these things. Remember that these lectures do not take the place of uh, your reading in your textbook. So make sure that you read uh, 3.1 in your textbook and that will give you even more of an idea uh, about ecology, our biosphere, the different levels within our biosphere and also the difference between biotic and abiotic factors. Uh, I hope this helps you. Come back and revisit this, uh, this video anytime that you would like, uh, especially before quizzes and tests. Uh, that might be a good way for you to study for your quiz or test that will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. I hope everybody has a good night, and I'll see you all in class.